Hello and welcome to Fish Fingers and Custard Explosion Network's Doctor Who Up Show, where we break down and discuss each and every episode of Doctor Who. This week's episode titled Rogue. My name's Dylan Blight. Joining me to discuss it, Ashley Hobley. Hey Dylan, excited to be here, all dressed up just like I'm Bridgerton. Yeah, cosplaying, hey? Eh? Yeah. Mm. Uh, so this week's episode, as I said, Rogue, synopsis, the Doctor and Ruby land in 1813, where guests at a Duchess's party are being murdered, and a mysterious bounty hunter called Rogue is about to change the Doctor's life forever. The episode was written by Kate Heron and Bryony Redman, and directed by Ben Chesel. Mm-hmm. Guest starring, Jonathan Groff, I guess yes. I should say, because he is a big enough name to get his own, make sure I don't miss that. Uh, what did you think of this week's episode? Uh, it was a lot of fun, you know. Uh, obviously, you know, playing up the pop culture-ness of Bridgerton, I guess, at the moment, which is an interesting take. Um, you know, obviously the key thing here is, you know, we get Shooty's Doctor with uh, Jonathan Groff, and it's cool relationship thing, the tension through the entire episode is, you know, uh, they have this, they develop this bond. Um, but yeah, it's really cool that this show has come out in these last two episodes and go like, if you're any kind of bigot, Doctor Who's not for you anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of weird that you still see people online being like, they've ruined the... I was like, I don't know what... You know. It's like I saw someone... I saw someone... Off, quickly, off tangent. I saw someone today, there was some interview with um, What's-His-Face from The Boys being like, yeah, if you only just realised what the show's about, uh, yeah, fuck off. Cookie. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Like, people, I just, yeah, I don't know. You realize, only just now I'm realizing Homeland is a bad guy? <laughs> that's like. Yeah, I was like, are you, anyway, that's the world we live in, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I think this was a super fun episode. I think the chemistry between um, Shooty and uh, Jonathan Groff was really great. I think, I also think that the um, Indira Varma. Yep. Yep, Indira, Indira Varma. Varma. Yep. Um, was really good in this. Uh, she shows up in a bunch. That's of crazy because she was in Torchwood, right? Uh, yes. Which, yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking she was from um, uh, what's the book? Uh, she was from um, fuck. What am I thinking? Um, I? I was thinking she was from um. What am I thinking of from? Oh, probably came most Thrones, recently. Right? Yeah, Game of Thrones, but no, more recently. Oh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, that's what she was most recently. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Um, anyway, she she was good. Uh, the episode also, I guess, I think heavily sets up a lot for the next two episodes. Like, I know it doesn't seem like it is, you but so? I just, I want to point out, like, I think it's very weird that, now you could be like, Dylan, you're, you're thinking too much into it. Maybe I am. I think it's very weird that this episode has as many Bridgerton references as it is, has as many pop songs played as orchestral versions within it. Shout out to Kylie Minogue. Yeah. I, the fact that they literally refer to it as cosplaying. I don't know. I think coming back to this theory of... Other dimensional beings. Yeah, and just like, you know the less alien y supernatural stuff and more fantasy story elements and stuff. Even the fact that he like they mentioned D and D and him getting it from like spotting the dice and you know the joke roll for initiative and just even the the random throw out of idea of A people cosplaying, B uh, someone playing a board game, a literal like role playing board game in this. And all the music and everything. I just, I just felt like there was a lot. I feel like there was a lot of subtext in behind this episode. Or I'm starting to go insane, which is not a bad thing because I, I think you're going insane. (laughs) I, I miss, I did miss for a while 
having Doctor Who in which I could begin to like find my own my own red herrings in. You know what I mean? Because mm. it's fun, even if it's not all right. <laughs> it's where <laughs> I would uh, where I'd say for that. Um, I mean, what 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 do you think of all that? All that stuff I just mentioned, the Bridgerton, the over-the-top Bridgerton mentions, the orchestral covers of um, popular songs, like two, three of them that was played within it, all the mentions of cosplay, um, the dice, the D&D, the, all, these, all these elements. What do you think of all this? I don't think it, there's too much to it. It's just like, here, here's some things that the kids talk about. <laughs> mm. Just a coincidence, you know? Uh, I feel like the misusing of co- cosplay is very amusing to me. They're not cosplaying, they're role-playing. They're like, Role playing, you know the bad guys in this episode. You know, because cosplayers just dress up as what they want to be. You know, they don't actually mm. act out or try to live the roles that they're doing. They're dressing up as generally. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe there is a bigger thing. Maybe Rogue comes back in these next two episodes. Um. I don't know. It's it's so tough to say, and it's so well. It's it's. I mean, the trajectory of this season has not been heavily, uh, you know, uh, what's the word? Procedural? No, not procedural. Um, what's the opposite of procedural? <laughs> there hasn't That's been true. an ongoing narrative the entire season. You know, there's just kind of been one off. Well, there has been in the background, and they're pulling it sort of. next week. I mean, yeah, the, the old lady like they show in the yeah. teaser, but other than that, you know, yeah, which is funny because. I guarantee, like, and like, uh, uh, what episode was it where I said to you that someone I saw someone point that out on Twitter or whatever for me? And ever since then, I've I've noticed it, right? Where she, like, because once it's it's once you have it pointed out, you 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 sort of see. I think it, it was right? the the how many feet or yards, whatever that one mm. was. But I guarantee there's people that have been watching this, and then when they see that like next time episode thing, and it shows her all, and it's like, oh, oh. I didn't realize that was all happening yeah. in the background. But yeah, so as much as you say, you know, hasn't been a, a big through narrative happening, I think there has been. And I think there's a lot of little clues towards what's happening. Now, how it, how it all comes together, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, I don't think it's any different to the first season that Russell T. Davies did with Bad Wolf, right? Yeah. Lots of little Where singular little stories. Things. Every episode would have a little hint towards who Bad Wolf Bad was Wolf and what was, Bad yeah. Wolf was. And, all that sort of stuff. So, just to wait and see how it all kind of comes together, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I think the other thing that's just before I get a little bit more, I, the other thing I really enjoyed about this episode is so it starts, you don't have to see him come in and do the whole, like, oh my God, we're in 1800s. Yeah, it's just, it's just there. They're there. They're there. They're There's a good time. Dance. Just dancing. Good. Well, Explaining fine. why they I, can dance. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they got a. I like again, just because they know what the they know what the modern audience is like. How do they know how to dance so well? Better fucking explain it so the internet doesn't get mad. Just doesn't matter. Well, doesn't I mean, it sets matter. it up why how Ruby can survive later. So, I guess so. Yeah. Um, I real I did like how straight away we sort of after that little intermingle first five minutes bit, you get straight away the doctor goes off to hang out with rogue the entire episode yeah and ruby at this point is now able to stand on her two feet but that was a good little mm-hmm. touch too like it's not this whole the doctor and the they're companion hanging around the each other, yeah. they're very dependent on each other he goes no nah, just i'll go fine. float with this dude up here and you'll be fine you hang yeah. out with your go float with whoever you want i'll float with whoever i want you know what did you make of the tension that could you could cut an ice with the the chemistry between the doctor and rogue or at least like portraying such heavy chemistry from the outset because it's not a build-up like he goes up there straight away he's just like he's just floating yeah they're just floating straight away it's like you know joking around you know uh it's funny because obviously you know shooty and shooty played uh eric on sex education it's like yeah that's a very eric thing to do (laughs) i'd like to point out one of the writers on this episode wrote for sex education uh, yeah, and Kate Heron did uh, Loki as well, directed Loki. Yeah, like it's time because I believe R.C. D- Davis like uh, criticized that show for its bi representation. 
Yes. He, and, uh, she came and did an episode. But it, yeah. uh, it's implied that I guess the doctor is bi. Uh, I think the doctor knows what bi or straight is. The doctor is yeah. the doctor, right? The doctor likes what the doctor he likes. He is gender fluid, <laughs> so I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, But yeah, they had great chemistry and like, you know, obviously Rogue was kind of awkward and didn't know exactly how to play well, it. Because he cause, know, cause he's he playing it talk- like he's like trying to talk his like, he's this creature bait. is trying to trick yes. him. Yeah. 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 So. And Jonathan, Jonathan Gross, Groff, big actor, I think, to have on a... For a Doctor... Big, for a Doctor like, episode. He's on the same level as Neil Patrick Harris, arguably. Yeah. I think so. Um, obviously, I mean, outside of TV... I, and this is the other thing. Like, I, again, I'm maybe reading into it too much. What is Jonathan Groff most known for? Mindhunters. Probably. Nope. Being the voice, that one voice in Frozen. <laughs> nope. Something else. Appearing on Glee. No. Are you fucking with me? <laughs> he did Hamilton. Thank you. John Fogoff, most known for Hamilton. Now, playing into the themes of songs and dances and everything that this has, this season has going, which but the Doctor literally starts singing in this episode. They don't have him sing, but I was like, yeah. I'm just reading into this casting a bit. Do you know what the, the start of his final song is in Hamilton? You'll no. be back. Oh, shit. It all ties in. It all ties <laughs> no, in. No, I don't. I think I'm deep. Break this down. Mm-hmm. I can't believe that. Yeah, like, I was like, oh, I don't know. This casting, is he going to sing a song? But he doesn't. Doesn't, but yeah. Not yet. No Wait musical star who's very wet, apparently. All the time. Mm. In the mouth. Hmm. But the doctor sings Willy Wonka, so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was cool. Like him showing off the TARDIS. Mm. Uh, yeah. Haven't seen that much of that this season. Do you know, people getting excited about seeing the TARDIS. No. I Some did enjoy the, the TARDIS, bit. Of, <laughs> I enjoyed the bit of him, of Rogue, should, like decloaking his ship and like, why'd yeah. you hide it behind it? Why didn't you cloak your ship? It's behind a tree. <laughs> <laughs> It's very true. Uh, yeah, so that was great. Obviously, he goes to ship. We have this whole cool moment in the ship where, you know, he's about to kill the doctor, basically. And, uh, you know, eventually you get the older faces of the doctor. Another thing here that I'd like to, mm-hmm. I don't understand, or maybe I do, I don't, but it shows all the doctor's faces, right? Mm-hmm. Including some that people would say aren't canon. What, the War Doctor? Or... No, um, the Christmas one. Old oh, mate. dear. I guess he was replaced in the original. Uh, Peter. I can't remember. No. Um... Hold on. The... Richard, whatever his name is. Yeah. You're going to kill me in a minute. What it, Richard E. Grant's doctor? You just looked and you were like, he wasn't in it. Yeah, he was. His face shows up. But I didn't know his doctor was apparently hidden. Here we go. This art, first article I click on is from radiotimes.com when I Google Richard E. Grant Doctor Who. Doctor Who fans are used to the show's established canon being rewritten, the timeless child, anyone. The latest episode might have snuck in another huge game changer that rewrites history all over again. Rogue sees the Doctor, she did get where encounter character meets the bound hunter, John for Gross through an attraction which develops between the pair, blah, 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 blah. Rogue assaults the Doctor at gunpoint to his craft, blah, 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 blah. The scan surfaces holographic representations of the previous Doctors, the likes of Jodie Whittaker, Peter Capaldi, William Hartnell, Tom Bacon, David Tennant, twice all appear as one might expect. Um, but there's more. Another face also appears alongside the Time Lord's passing incantations. Through the hologram, image is all distorted. Appears to be Richard E. Grant, representing a former face of the Doctor. Grant has appeared in Doctor Who in live action before, playing Doctor Walter Simeon in 2012 episode The Snowman, and later The Great Intelligence, a faceless entity who assumed Simeon's image. In 2013, The Bells of St. John and The Name of the Doctor, 
There's no good reason for an image of Simeon slash the Great Intelligence to appear alongside the Doctor's old faces, though instead Grant's holographic cameo in Rogue appears to nod to another previous association with the Whoverse. In 2003, the Oscar-nominated star of Whit- Whitnall and I voiced a new car- incarnation of Doctor in the animated web series Scream of Shalka, a tale of a worm-like alien residing in an English village, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, explain that. <laughs> I don't know, you know. Also, Grant did play a version of the Doctor in the 1999 comic relief sketch, The Curse of Fatal Doctor. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it's actually from. Yeah. Written by none other than future Doctor Who showrunner Steve Moffat. See? But then, they, as they point out, it's not that short live lived incarnation because where would then be Rowan Atkinson, Hugh Grant, Jim Broadbent, and Joanna time. Lumley? If he had a kept doing holograms, more people should have. I don't know. I mean, that's a weird thing to kind of put in the canon, I guess. But, you know. Because the rest made sense. Like, they have the Fugitive Doctor, they have the War Doctor, they have mm-hmm. the, you know, all these other ones that have snuck in that we don't still don't understand where they fit. But yeah. I saw Richard E. Grant, and I was like, no, no, that's the, that's the confusing one. The- I don't know. He's the timeless child, so he could be any <laughs> you know, so... It's, all it's just such a it's such a weird choice to be like, all right, I'm just gonna randomly Richard E. Grant. <laughs> like of yeah. all the all the things, like now we're gonna say Richard E. Grant's doctor, apparently was a, doctor. Is a real thing. It was a completely separate life that we didn't count for some reason. And look, you can go I'm just saying, like, is it like we didn't count him before when we thought he only had twelve reincarnations. Go down this road, the whole season. Yeah, the Doctor, whatever at the edge of time, makes a wish. Or, no, what? What? What's the? Uh, does a thought at the edge of time? That's and that's how we get the toy maker and whatever else, right? Yep. That's how we got here. Now suddenly, this has brought to life what would have been considered a non-canon Doctor. Hmm. To the point that he doesn't even like. It's not even a, a thought he process. Remember. It just shows up. There's Richard E. Grant. So what you're saying is we're going to get Richard E. Grant sometime this is. Who's to say? Maybe. I don't think he'd be against it. I think Richard E. Grant would come play Doctor. Yeah, he's cool. He's cool. I don't know. All right, other things for this episode, so so I'll see if you fucking... I'll turn into theorizing over here. Uh... So we get all that, comes out, do the thing. They have a lot more flirting. It's great. They go meet the alien creatures. Alien creatures, really cool. Did you like them? Villains? The Childa. Childa, yeah. I enjoyed the fact that at the start, you're like, oh, there's two of these. And you're mm-hmm. like, oh, they only think there's one, but there's two. They're going to be fucked. And it turns out, there's like six <laughs> mm. <laughs> hanging around. Uh, even the turn that the, the chick that Ruby's been hanging out with, you know, was yeah, one. she was the secret well. one. You know, even though she's like super impish and bookish and, you know, quiet, you know, mm. and her being very excited about Ruby's weird futuristic talk of like, okay, <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I, th- I thought they were interesting villains, even though, again, they weren't cosplaying. And it's weird that they say they are cosplaying. We're going to cosplay this world to our death. Yeah, we're going to cosplay the fuck out of it. Yeah. It, it just felt like old people talking about trying to use words that young people use. Hmm. That's what I'm saying. It's weird. It's, it's very. It's so specific. Like, hmm. I don't know. There's something, there's something going on here. Uh, what I, I think my favorite moment with them though was well, other than I think they looked really cool. I think the makeup and all that the stuff. Effect, the, yeah. the one dude with the really long like mustache, whatever, was pretty cool. <laughs> mustache frizzles. Yeah. yeah, that guy was cool. Um, my favorite scene, I think. Though, well, no, not my favorite. I think just the funniest scene little subtle funny scene was that when they're chasing the doctor um and they're like oh, i want to be the doctor i want to be a doctor because they think he's a real doctor the, yeah. the main <laughs> <laughs> the main one just like starts yelling out all these things like i want to chop up a i want to perform a di- uh, surgery i want to <laughs> i want to eviscerate somebody I want to eviscerate, perform, yeah, and all this sort of stuff. I was like, I thought that was pretty funny. Just <laughs> in the background yelling out and stuff. Because I'm like, yeah, I mean, he did say he was the doctor. Like, yeah. You know? Who are they to argue with that? 
So good for them. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then, yeah, obviously the ending was, I think, well done. The uh, uh, Millie did a Millie good job it. at playing a, playing a ruby Shoulder. version. That was well, she was shouldered. doing the deck cranks. Yeah, it's true. True. Yeah, she tried. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, Rogue comes in, saves the day. Says, find Sacrifice me. himself. Yeah. Sacrifices himself. So, I mean, that's the thing, right? She, so he, he says, says, find me. And the doctor's like, it's too hard. Yeah, can't literally. Do <laughs> can't do it. He could be anywhere. <laughs> Back off. Sure, we made out, but. Yeah. No one yeah. kisses and tells. Doesn't. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had more than my. Of years. Yeah. I've had my share of random uh, bounty hunter Hookups. type yeah. characters. Yeah. Um, but he's he has to show back up, right? I just feel like that's too yeah. like the line of find me, the Jonathan Groff casting, the romance. Like I just feel like there's yeah. too like that's not a one off, surely. That's not a one off. No, surely he has to come back at some point. Yeah. Some point. Even no, if it, it could is be next season. Setting it up for the but, down the road, yeah. Yeah, it could be for down the road, but I just feel like that that's too, too big of a casting for a character for one yeah. off. And, and then it becomes interesting because does he come back as like He hates some, a love interest? Or him, yeah, has or, he turned because he's been stuck yeah. on this planet? It's I mean, I, I feel like him hating him because he's got stuck somewhere. It's the more logical direction, but it would yep. sort of turn, it would piss people off because they'd obviously want to see the romance. Got invested, but, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, if you, I always like when uh, ever I hear you, like, people talk like good writers. Or he gets killed by one of the soldiers as soon as he's on that planet. <laughs> then, well, yeah, I guess that's the thing. They take his body, yeah. But, you know, good writers will talk about how the second you start trying to protect characters, not do the the thing that actually makes the most sense, sense for the story, yeah. For so the story, yeah. It's like, well, the thing that makes the most sense is probably that he would. Anyway, uh, anything else from this week's episode? No, just a lot of fun, you know. Uh, cool setting. Again, it's cool that this version of the Doctor just is willing to like fit in with the theme of the setting and that kind of stuff. Shooty looks good with hair. Um, yeah, it was a good time. And what are we thinking for next uh, next week? The the first of a two part finale for the season, which is weird to say. I feel we're like gonna we're going to get some bit. some answers, but then we left some questions. Um, yeah, crazy. Two weeks left. It is, isn't it? Like I feel like it's just mm-hmm. come super fast. But anyway, um, we get Gasman back as uh, Rose Noble next week. Oh, Working at unit, apparently they employ children. Why not? So good for them. Uh, but yeah, came for next week. Came for the the following week after. If you live in the UK, you can go watch it back to back. Not next week, but the week after. Yeah. Again, to clarify that double episode cinema thing, I did look into it because you scared me. I was like, that that's definitely no. Yeah. You are rewatching the first episode, The Legend of Ruby Sunday, the and then watching the finale, which is called Empire of Death, um, which. Yeah, that sounds really threatening when you say it out like that. <laughs> the double episode finale of the season is The Legend of Ruby Sunday, Empire of Death. All right, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, sounds fun. Sounds fun. All right, that'll do it for this week's episode of Fish Fingers and Custard. Of course, let us know your thoughts on this week's episode, Doctor Who, if you'd like, over on Discord, explosionhub.com slash Discord, or on Twitter, if you'd like, explosionhub.com slash Twitter takes you there. And we'll be back next week to discuss, as I said, the first of two parts for the finale of this uh, really good season of Doctor Who. Goodbye.